Okay guys, so timestamps of the different parts of the video will be in the description and the comments below. Since there are two game corners in this game, I'll begin by showing where you can get the coin case in both regions, starting off here in Goldenrod. Um, so here's the game corner. If you go down here into the tunnel and down into these stairs, you'll have to battle this guy who has two Grimers, I think, and this guy who has a Lickitung. And go over to this item, and that's where you get the coin case in Goldenrod. Now if you're looking for the coin case in Celadon City, starting from the Pokemon Center, you're going to have to go all the way down here, and uh, you're going to have to go in the cafe, which is all the way down here in the lower right section of the city, and talk to this girl in the red dress. dress. And uh, she gives you the coin case. Now something interesting that, uh, I don't know, I guess it's worth pointing out, is that if you get the coin case in one city, then uh, it won't you, like you you can't get double you can't get two coin cases. So in this case, if I go back to Goldenrod City after collecting it from uh, from her, there won't be any item there. Now if I uh, collected the coin case in Goldenrod and come back here, she won't like she'll just say the same exact thing, but she won't give you the item. Now starting with the coins and the prizes in the Goldenrod corner, if you go over to this little desk here. And you talk to her, you can see the uh, exchange rate of how you can buy or purchase coins using your Poke Dollars. So for every one coin you buy, you have to spend 20 Poke Dollars. Now if you you start off the game with 3,000 coins, so you can get, like, I guess enough to get started. But that, if you go over here, you can see how expensive things get with the, the Pokemon you can buy. Uh, in total, all these Pokemon together are worth 5,200 coins, so if you want to buy them this way, that's how much it's going to be worth. Uh, none of them are exclusive to the game corner though, so you can just catch them if you want. Uh, it might be faster for you, depending on what method you use, to just purchase them this way, but yeah. So the, in total, there are 5,200 coins, or if you use the exchange rate with uh, your Poke Dollars, you would have to have 100 for thousand Poke Dollars. Now going over to the left here, you can see the items that you can purchase here, which in this case I do believe there are a couple of exclusive items. I know the Master Ball, you, uh, this is where you can purchase many, so if you run out of the first one you can get that one. The Lucky Egg, I'm pretty sure it's either you can get them by catching chances or you can just buy them only through here. Experience Share, I'm pretty sure this is the only place where you can, you can get it. Gold Flames as well, and the Quick Claw. Rare Candy, of course, you can pick up uh, all over the all over the game. So in total, these are worth 12,909 coins, or 259,800 dollars. Alright, so in the Celadon game corner, if you go inside, and go all the way down here, this is where you exchange your Poke Dollars for coins, but it's the same exchange rate as the Golden Run game corner, so it's nothing to be... Uh, so sought out after, so don't worry about it. Still, one coin is equal to 20 Poke Dollars. If you talk to this guy though, he gives you 18 coins. So it's something to start, to, uh, start off with, I guess. If you go over here though, to the right, on this building, you talk to this person, and here are the items. Again, I think there's a Berserk Gene you can't get anywhere else. Um, Lens is rare, like a bunch of rare items, like usual. Uh, in total, these are worth 5,890 coins, so about half as less as the Goldenrod game corner, and that's probably because of the Master Ball. Uh, in total, that's 117,000 Poke Dollars. So, if you're curious about the Pokemon here, they are different, and but they still do have that uh, increased shiny chance, 1 in 1,024, and here. Here they are, so rare, po rare Pokemon again. This time it's 5,200 coins and 104,000. Uh, yeah, and actually that's the same amount as before, so I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah. Now for the games themselves, if you're looking for a more in-depth analysis of how to perform better and uh, have a better understanding of how these games work in the game corner, I'd suggest checking out Johnstone's video on 
uh, I think it's titled something like, Can You Buy All the Prizes at the Game Corner or something like that? I'll link you in the description and in the comments, and uh, I'll put the timestamp at, time at which he starts talking about the Gen 2 games. Um, but basically, there's, there's in, in Crystal Clear, there's three different types of Game Corner games. In this row, there is the roulette game. Maybe I'll put um, the clip of John Stone explaining it. In this, you bet three coins and then can select what you think the card is in a bunch of different ways. The highest multiplier is guessing the Pokemon and the level on the card, which gives you 72 coins. But you can go as low as just guessing that it would be either a Pikachu or a Jigglypuff, which will net you six coins. After each guess, the card that was revealed is removed from the rotation. This goes for 12 rounds, which means at the final round, just before the cards are reset, you have an 8% chance of guessing the exact card. Here is the roulette row again. Here is the slots row, where you have a 20% chance of winning, apparently. Uh, this row is the Voltorb flip row, which is my personal favorite and, in my opinion, the easiest to take advantage of. I'll get into why in just a bit. This is the slots row again, and this is the slots row again too. Now for the Goldenrod City game corner, how it goes is this row is slots, this row is slots, this row is slots, this row is Voltorb flip, and this row is roulette. So one thing worth mentioning I think for the slots minigame is that apparently in the older uh, I haven't tested it in the stop myself, but in the older uh, and vanilla crystal, the reward for hitting the triple sevens, lucky sevens, is you get 300 coins. In crystal clear, though, you get 777 points. So the payout in that case would be a lot more worth it, but I still recommend taking the Voltorb Flip game. So essentially, this Voltorb Flip strategy relies on the, the aspect of you playing on an emulator. So if you're if you're in the case of playing this on your 3DS, then I'm sorry this method won't work for you, and uh, it's relying on save states. So if you enter a game of Voltorb Flip right now, and say you can take this whole column off, right, because there's zero Voltorbs, but say there's a looking for you're looking for a more risky option like uh, like this one right here, what you would do is that because you have the option of doing a save state in the middle of doing a game, whereas normally you would not, you would go over here and you would save in your slot, take the risk, and it's a Voltorb. So you lose, right? In that case, you go back here to your most recent save state, you take it again, and you haven't lost anything, so then you can continue trying. That's another Voltorb. Go back to your save states. Maybe it's this one, yep, and there it is, right? So then you just, once you get that risk done, you resave your state, and then you go for another risky tile, maybe, maybe this one. All right, that was, that was good. Maybe this one. So that was a Voltorb, you know now not to take it. So you go back here, maybe this one, right? And there's a, there's all you need for this entire column. So, and just like that, you already have 18 coins. You continue using this method it's so fast. The better way to guarantee yourself points, in my opinion, it's much easier. But of course, if you don't have access to this uh, save state method, then uh, I guess the best option would then to just be either continue playing Volter Flip, since it's a lot more fun in my opinion and relies less on luck, or you just spam the slots and hope you get lucky. And of course, the best way to get coins is to just buy coins with your Poke Dollars. Now, there's different ways of gaining money fast. You, you've probably heard of selling your rare candies, Rechallenging the simulation of U8, U8 for uh, maybe just selling a bunch of your stuff in general. Those can be kind of tedious and maybe even in the case of U8 for kind of hard to get to. The easiest way though to uh, grind money though is to go to Cerulean City, walk up here on Nugget Bridge, and remember it's changed in the, the Gen 2 games. You walk all the way over here and go up here and talk to this guy. 
Then after, you're going to have to battle a series of trainers. And once you finish them all, you're going to eventually make your way all the way to a trainer who's just by there, just by the little tree or trees over there. And uh, by completing this challenge, this little mini gauntlet, you'll be rewarded with a nugget. And you're going to see, it's really simple to do. The, 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 the trainers here are really not that tough. And you can grind this out. Like, as soon as you leave, I, I'm pretty sure as soon as you come back over this way, you can restart just like that. So you just grind that and just grind nuggets. And nuggets are sold for 5,000 Poké Dollars each. So you could just keep on doing that, make money, and then get coins, and yeah, get all the prizes if you want to. So that's the best way to get make money, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of people agree with that too.